the NBA 2K franchise has been around for a very, very, very long time. Since the early days, we've all seen videos of all these fantastic YouTubers playing the NBA 2K series every single game that was possibly out there. And it has absolutely developed over time from what was just a generic basketball game to the absolute pinnacle of what it can be today. And through those many changes, we've also seen many changes in the way that it's structured, in the way that NBA 2K runs its financial process of the game as well as the animations and all of the things involving the things that we love about NBA basketball but what has happened to the NBA 2k franchise because over those times we've had fantastic games like NBA 2k 11 NBA 2k 14 NBA 2k 16 17 15 but all of a sudden once we got to 18 19 and 20 things started to dwindle down a little bit for the NBA 2k franchise not necessarily with its sales but for the actual mood and actual happiness it brings to the NBA community. Because so far, NBA 2K20 has been the worst NBA 2K of all time, according to many, many people. And 2K18 is not far behind it. So in many ways, we have a lot to do today. This video is going to discuss a lot if not everything that I want to be added in the next NBA 2K21 My Career Series. Now, if you guys want me to do anything related to any other game modes, such as my team, my GM, my league, play now, there's so much that could be added into this game that I feel like there's a lot of missed opportunities in every single game mode. So feel free and please like and subscribe if you're new. Let's get started to the first thing that I want added in NBA 2K21. You guys remember NBA 2K11? Do you guys remember NBA 2K12 and 13 and 14? Do you guys remember how it was to get drafted? Do you guys remember the randomized teams that you could get selected to? I specifically remember NBA 2K13 as that was my first NBA 2K that I ever played. And by goodness, it took me by storm. It took my heart. It took everything it took. It took everything out of me not to get the next one and to not fall into this addicted series of basketball games. NBA 2K13 is what got me into the NBA. And it might not be the greatest of all the NBAs, but there was one thing that really, really took me away and really made me intrigued in the NBA 2K community. And that was the way that I got drafted. I loved the drafting system, the old drafting system, back when you didn't know which team you were gonna get picked by. But yes, you got interviews by three teams, but it wasn't necessarily a guarantee to get those three teams. I remember one time I specifically tried my very, very best to get picked last. And it, gave, it was amazing because I actually didn't know who I was going to. And it was amazing. I think I got picked by Golden State at that time, which was um, not, not far away from last, but it definitely wasn't last. And it, it, it's one of those things where you, you miss those times. You'd always go back to make a my player, make a my career, another my career series, just so you could pick the team, just so you could get drafted by a certain team or just so you could see how high you could go there have been many many youtube videos back in the day that saying can i get the first pick in the nba draft and they put it on the hardest difficulty um i feel like this needs to come back now for me this is not the hard the worst thing in the world it's not the hardest thing to implement either i do as much as i respect people wanting to actually pick a team themselves and play i don't want that removed either i think there should be an option whether it is an option in the menu or it's guarantees flat out asks you right before you get into the micro story mode, which I assume will still be a thing. Do you want to get drafted by a random team or would you select? Would you rather select your team? If you can answer that, you, you get to the option to go to a random team or you get an option to pick a team that you want to play for. I think that suits everybody because not only will that generate a lot of buzz around social media, not only will it generate a lot of excitement, it will also add replayability, trying to get the highest draft pick possible, trying to get the highest overall. And in the end, that is going to make more people come to play your game. And I think 2K, the more people that play your game, the more positivity there'll be around it. And this, for me, is one of the most essential things you could bring to the NBA 2K20 My Career, 2K21 My Career Series. If you just, all, all it takes is something that small that can make, bring, bring a lot of excitement, a lot of nostalgia, and overall, a lot of happiness with a lot of the NBA 2K community. No one really wants to select their own teams, especially, or at least me, 
I'd rather get it, get it randomized. I'd rather actually earn my spot instead of just picking a team and then going wherever they land. That's just me. That's the first thing that I want added in NBA 2K21. Now, the NBA 2K story has been an ongoing thing for a long period of time. From NBA 2K14 to NBA 2K20, the story mode has generated through a lot of ups and downs and arguably is one of the best things that they've added in the NBA 2K franchise itself. Actually adding a story mode, adding certain events, adding cutscenes, players actually willing to come over and speak on behalf of uh, the NBA. All these things that have happened and that's great for the NBA 2K community. But in my opinion, this is become very very stale now I love the fact that they added high school basketball and somewhat college basketball I like how they added the G League they did all they can with this series of NBA 2k and its story but it's time for something different it's time to bring a new element into this game I feel like we need to have a variety of choices of what's going to happen in the story mode next year we can't just keep going on the basic clear vision one-way path, go straight to the NBA. There needs to be more than that. We, In the end, of course, the goal is the NBA, right? The goal is to become the best player in the NBA. We need different pathways to do that. Some people want to play European basketball. Some people want to go to the Euro Leagues. Some people want to start out in the G League. Some people want to go to college. Have you seen in the, in the G League at the moment, so many young rookies are deciding to go to the G League instead of actually going into the into college, into Duke, into whatever college that they wanted to go to. They go to the G League for the money. That could be a very good storyline to add in NBA 2K. Also, you could choose to go to the Euro League. Lamelo Ball went to Australia to go and prove his worth and make some money. Yes, he got kicked out of college, but in the end, that could be another storyline. What I'm trying to say is, maybe this doesn't uh, affect solely on NBA 2K21, but there definitely needs to be more pathways to getting into the NBA than just the one pathway we're given every single year. Yes, in those pathways, we do a lot of things. We go to China, we go to um, the G League, we go through college and high school, but we need more of that in the one game. I want to choose how I make the NBA. I don't want the game to choose for me how I make the NBA. And it might, it needs to be harder to make the NBA as well. Like, I understand it, it's a story mode and it's not meant to be difficult, but there needs to be an element of a challenge. As soon as we uh, start the game, we're 60 overall, but all these dudes behind us are not that great. We only get maybe one or two people that are going to be a much higher overall than us throughout the course of the story. I think we need more than that. You're telling me there's no one else on that, chi on that Shanghai team that would make the NBA? There has to be at least one. Uh, at, at least one. And I, I feel like there needs to be more than that. I, I remember NBA 2K17 having a teammate as well, uh, the Orange Juice duo, with, and it was great. And I feel like we need some, a little bit more of that. We need variety. We need random, random things to happen, man. We need our own pathway to the NBA. We do not need the NBA 2K or the storyline picking it for us. Let us pick how we make the NBA. I feel like that is an incredible decision. It brings a lot of people to make new um, my career players, my career builds, experiment a few things, find out endings to multiple stories. In my opinion, this is a great way to actually take the NBA franchise forward. And I feel like down the line, maybe not NBA 2K21, but down the line, this is definitely something that will happen. Now, one thing you always put with NBA 2K20, all the NBA 2Ks, and it's my career, is the park. We all love the park. I've not seen one player not eventually make their way to the park and not have a good time at least one time in their life. The park has been revolutionary to the NBA 2K franchise, and the things that they've done since 2K14 to 2K20, honestly, if you look back at the way the park was in NBA 2K14 to the way the neighborhood now, it's miles, leaps different. But they've added a lot of great ideas that they've gotten rid of due to bad decisions based on business-wise, um, based business-wise. Ronnie 2K stated that affiliations is very, very bad for the business of NBA 2K as it divides the community. Now, the one thing that I do have to talk about is affiliations. This is the next part of the video. I have to talk about affiliations because in the end, 
um, Ronnie 2K is right to an extent. Yes, affiliations would be bad for many circumstances of the NBA um, 2K community. It does divide the NBA 2K community. But to my response to that, doesn't it bring it closer together as well? Think of it like this. What is the one thing that NBA 2K does in the park that helps dif differentiate, helps divide, and helps actually um, make the, the game somewhat bearable to play without being so repetitive over time? One, changing the maps. We had a Halloween um, special for NBA 2K. We had a Christmas special for NBA 2K. But the other thing is, a, is park events. King of the Court, all these free throw ones. Look, I don't know the names of them, but at the end, they put a lot of park events together, NBA 2K. From NBA 2K 17 to now, park events were insane, or I believe NBA 2K 18. So despite that, what can affiliations do that can make park events seem less repetitive? They can add new ones. Honestly, if you split the community into three and you have park events like Rival Day back in the day when you went to other people's courts and you beat them on their home turf to go and get yourself a victory, to go get yourself a new court. Give them incentives to play the game and they will play the game. Your community will not be divided. In my opinion, the community will become closer and closer together because it brings back the competitiveness edge that you want in an NBA 2K game. For example, when I was in NBA 2K15, I played for the Rough Riders, uh, Rivet City Rough Riders, and that was mine. I would die before I would go to another affiliation. Like, I stuck by that, and I wanted to make the Rough Riders the best it could possibly be. Now, of course, in NBA 2K15, I wasn't great at the game, but I knew I could have somewhat of an impact. And other people felt the same way as I did. So as a community, as an entire affiliation, you were able to defend your home court from everybody that tried to come near it. Anybody that wants a chance to go and make a statement, you go to you go to River City. You go and try and beat one of our players. Same with River City. We want to make an impact. We go to Old Town. We go to Sunset Beach. We go to all these affiliations and we beat them on their home turf. Element of competitiveness. It's a competitive edge. At the end of the day, NBA is solely based on competitiveness. Whether it's in the game or whether it's off the off the court and your training, it's all about to, the will to be the best. NBA 2K has lost a lot of what that means in NBA 2K20. To be honest, to be quite frank, it doesn't matter if you're a rookie or if you're a legend. There's no real reward besides a helicopter coming down. There's no real reward that makes you feel like you've achieved something very, very meaningful. Yes, you could win a thousand park games, but what does that do? I would rather I would rather be backed into a, into a table, backed into a core with a bunch of players that are on my side, affiliation that will come and defend me as well as I would defend them. It's that kind of mentality here that I want to see. That brings the community together because it brings loyalty to an affiliation. It brings loyalty to all these players that even if they don't like their affiliation, they can change, they can, they can regroup, they can find other players that they like, they can find the affiliation that makes them feel the best. And that that is so essential to me. Like, I don't understand. In real life, is there not affiliations? In America, Los Angeles, you have New York, you have Brooklyn, all, by, all on its own. You have a bunch of affiliations from just based on where people are from. So be realistic. How could affiliations not make this game a better game? Business-wise, I think, to be honest, if you're looking at sorts of advertisements and revenues and stuff like that, affiliations is perfect as well. You could put a bunch of ads on all of the um, all of the parks. Just put the same ads. Make the park layout the same, but make the environment different. It doesn't have to be the exact same as NBA 2K17. There are so many ways that they could go with this. Park events, you have the rival day. You could have defend home turf. You could have um, capture the wins and go to another affiliation. You, you, have, you could have all these things. Or maybe you could have king of the courts with all these NBA players. Different ones coming to different parks. You can make things so much more interesting and it will revive the park i'm telling you now it will revive the neighborhood don't think of it as a business decision because it's a business decision i bet you most of the things that you do is not the right choice you want to glitch the game and get 10k vc by doing advertisements by doing uh, sponsorships that's not gonna that's a bad decision you should have never done that in the end 
2K is more than just a business. It is meant to be an entertainment sort of, it's meant to be entertainment. It's meant to be a game that brings back the fun of playing basketball. When you watch an NBA game, at least for me, the first thing I do when I watch an NBA game is I wanna go and play NBA 2K. I wanna go and play the basketball game that has taken the world by storm. But the only way that anybody is going to get that itch to play it again is if they do the things that a lot of people want to do. So don't question, um, don't count out affiliations just yet. But it looks like uh, the way that Ronnie's speaking, it's most likely not going to happen. But I've given you many reasons why this could be good for the NBA 2K community. It could be good. It could help revive the game that is, seems so dull at the moment. And it can revive the um, business aspect of NBA 2K as well. If you promote this right, there is no reason why affiliations is, is bad for the NBA 2K community. All you need to do is promote it right. You will have the nostalgic fans coming back to this game to pick an affiliation. You will have a bunch of brand loyalty towards an affiliation. Something that NBA 2K 17 and 16 and 15 always did was loyalty to a brand man. People wanted to stick by their affiliation and make them proud. We've we've missed that. There's no reason to be proud of NBA 2K20. What? You got to legend. Congratulations. You've wasted so much time. And in the end, you got a helicopter. You could you can walk to the park if you want, but you got a helicopter that brings you there. Like it's changed so much, and in my opinion, especially with the reward system and affiliations, they need to be brought back to make this better and to revive the park. Now this just might be me, but don't you guys remember the park badges that we had back in the day? Don't you guys remember the dribble moves that you were able to do? Have you actually seen NBA Live? I know, I'm comparing NBA Live to NBA 2K. I can't believe it myself. But think of it realistically. What is the park supposed to do? It's supposed to bring the streets of the NBA into reality, where we're playing on street courts, we're playing outside, we're doing all these fantastic dribble moves. But how come I don't see much of that recently? How come everything is so generic? It's the basic behind the back, behind the back, behind the back. And, and drive, or maybe a hop step and drive, or maybe just plain run in and drive. There is no creativity in the dribble moves of the NBA 2K franchise anymore. Any time that there has been a good dribble move or a park dribble move where you could actually go on the floor, do all your skill moves, we don't see any of that in the NBA 2K franchise. But the reason why is because a lot of people will complain that it's overpowered. In my opinion, at the park, overpowered is not is not a bad thing. When you're in the park, you need to learn how to dribble. You need to learn how to shoot. You need to learn everything that you need to do to win a game. In my opinion, NBA 2K nerfing dribble moves, completely getting rid of dribble moves is not the right answer. You need multiple dribble moves. You need multiple fantastic ways to prove and, and make yourself so unique to the rest. These dribble moves is a must for the NBA 2K20 franchise. We need park badges as well to help increase the likelihood of these dribble moves occurring. In my opinion, the park badges was a fantastic way to get more people to play the park, to get more people to actually grind for badges. And I love the way that it did not happen overnight. It didn't happen like this, all of a sudden you have your park badges. It took a lot of time and effort. In my opinion, park badges, uh, instantly, you bring back park badges, more people will play the park. More people will actually want to win games. More people will come just so they could try out what it would be like to get a bone crusher badge or to get a, a, a brick wall type of badge where you just bully everybody or anything like that. It makes it so much better to know if you have a park badge, you have an advantage. If you have, if you've worked hard to get your wins, if you work hard to actually grind for these badges and you get them, you have an advantage over someone who doesn't. In my opinion, there is no skills required to play NBA 2K20. All you need to do is learn the basic behind the backs, maybe shoot it off of a screen or just do a hop, step and drive. There is absolutely no skill required with NBA 2K20 in its basic form. Now, obviously there's elite players, the pro, the uh, pro-am players, the ranked, uh, rank, rank one team in the world and all that. Yes, that's a different game. They're playing a completely different game to what we are playing, but 
as a whole, as the entire community, there is no skill required whatsoever to go and beat a, a, a player that's superstar, that has a thousand wins. You could be a rookie. You could go and beat them if you just do the basic cheese moves that they can't stop. That's what gets a big issue with this game. The only way to in, the only way to fix that is not just to do ban behind the backs, ban certain behind the backs, just so everything could be um, back to normal, everything's fair again. You need to add more behind the backs. You need to add more um, dribble moves. You need to add dribble moves that not, are not necessarily overpowered, but if you know how to use them, they be can become very, very skillful. It can become very, very hard to defend. At the end of the day, you need skill gaps in NBA 2K. You need to have an element of high skill players get more wins. Low skill players need to work their ass off to become one of those high skill players. There's no competition in this game. There's no reason to play this game and to win or lose, who cares? At the end of the day, who cares? You don't even have the rep. You barely, no one can know how many wins or losses you have. You have to go through your phone, find the player, go through all their badges, all this. At the end of the day, that's your choice. I don't really have a problem if my record doesn't show. I don't really care. I don't play that much to really care about my record. But for many, many people, if you have an element of skill that you can't use because 2K doesn't want you to use it, how are they gonna come back to the game and actually be satisfied? You need to add more dribble moves, add more crossovers, add more behind the backs, add more ISOs, add more add more step backs, add all these things that were in, in previous 2Ks but were classified as overpowered and he would make it every time. If 2K could balance these things right, don't make it overpowered, make it very skillful, make it something that you have to actually learn in order to use it properly and then everything will be fine. In my opinion, dribble moves is a must, park badges is a must and that's the next thing that I needed to say about NBA 2K20 and NBA 2K21 going forward. You guys like sponsorships, right? It's an easy way to make money in NBA 2K. Go get your sponsorship. Go get your Adidas sponsorship, your Nike sponsorship, your um, your Adidas sponsorship, and your and your uh, Under Armour sp sponsorship. Go get them all. Go get your bag. But why is there not more sponsorships in NBA 2K20? Why is there not more sponsorships in general of NBA 2K? There isn't Puma making shoes now. Is it Reebok making a stance back in the community for shoe for NBA shoes? Why are these things not being considered when it comes to actual sponsorships in the NBA? One thing the NBA I can honestly truly say does not lack is its clothes, it's its style. Yes, we need more hairstyles, we need more beards, we need all of that. But when it comes to the clothes, NBA 2K does not play games. They love to get more clothes into the game. Well, this is another example of them trying to do that. They need to add more sponsorships in this game. I want to. I don't want to be sponsored by the same four shoe companies every time. Yes, I love Adidas. I'm an Adidas guy. Adidas right there. I am an Adidas guy. You probably couldn't see that, but yeah. I'm an Adidas guy, but in the end, I do not want to get sponsored by Adidas every single year. I don't want to go around um, saying, oh my goodness, it's the same thing every year. That's how I feel when I pick shoes now. It's not an excitement of, oh my goodness, I'm, I can't wait to pick Adidas. Oh, me and D-Rose are going to go crazy together, man. Look at the shoes that we have. That's not what I think about anymore. From NBA 2K9, uh, 18 onwards, I've been thinking it's the same. It's just the same. It doesn't matter. As soon as you lose your contract with a, sh with a shoe company, you're just going to go get another one. And then you can lose that one and you can go back to the old one. There is no element of excitement in sponsors anymore. Yes, I understand it's very, very difficult to get sponsors to go and sponsor a game. It's very difficult. It costs a lot of money to do as well. But NBA 2K, this is the main reason of becoming stale because the same thing for three or four years now, we're getting beats, okay? We're getting Gatorade, yeah? That's fine. Beats and Gatorade, but then we're gonna get Nike. Nike's gonna come into town, and that's it. Where, what else is there, man? I'm sure I'm, I might be forgetting something. Like back in the day, there was Foot Locker, but it's the same stuff, man. We need more. We need more than the basic sponsorships that NBA 2K provides us. We need variety. I want to see people acting differently. I want to see uniqueness. This game lacks unique 
unique players. Everybody is either one or the other. It's not unique in the way that they play. It's not unique in the way most players look, the shoes that they wear, the clothes that they wear. Yes, they wear, yes, there are a lot of clothes in NBA 2K. Don't get me wrong, but somehow it still feels like it's the same old, same old, and that needs to change. And I think 2K going forward, I feel like that's an easy one for them to fix, and maybe, just maybe, they might do it in 2K21. Now, shout out Agent Zero for this one. Come on in. The one thing that, in my opinion, could really revive the park and my career as a whole is proximity chat. Yes, shout out Agent Zero. I feel like this guy's been screaming about it for years and still it has not come into fruition totally. There's been improvements in NBA 2K20, but in the end, we need proximity chat. We need to be able to communicate with other players in the park. The one thing that makes the park very, very dull, especially if you're playing alone, is that you can't communicate with anybody. You can't give anybody a reason to play with you. You can't give anybody a reason to actually give you a chance to go play Pro-Am or, or, or the Rec Center with you, or to go and try a 3v3 or a 2v2 game with you, because you could be the best player in the world, but if you have nobody to play with, and no one's willing to give you a chance because you can't talk to them, in the end, it doesn't matter how good of a player you are. Proximity chat is essential. Not only will it bring a lot of competitiveness back into the NBA 2K series, but it will bring so much more to that. You're going to create friendships here. You're going to create toxicity, yes, but you're going to create special relationships here. You're going to you're going to uh, create friends, actually giving each other a chance. You're going to create the environment that I'm sure you want to have. You want people to meet each other on 2K and become friends. You want all of these things because in the end, it's going to keep people coming back to playing your game because of how things started. That is an essential thing that NBA 2K needs to bring to the NBA 2K franchise. It's not that hard. I feel like every single game these days has proximity chat. So NBA 2K needs to follow suit and needs to follow the trends of recent success in games. And hopefully they could do that within NBA 2K21. Now let's talk about the NBA a little, a little bit. Obviously, when you're in the my career, your main goal is to get to the NBA, to grind your badges, to get the highest overall, and to win a championship with your team. A lot of people, that's their aim for every single year. My aim, no matter which NBA 2K it is, is to win at least one championship. Despite how many games I played, despite how many times I decide to come back and then leave, and just come back and then leave. My goal is always to win an NBA championship. But there is no element of surprise in NBA 2K my career anymore. There is no back in NBA 2K14. So, how do you like the season? What do you think's going on so far? There's no real cutscenes that can say I want to request a trade or I want to or I want this guy to get traded for this guy. Instead, it's all based on which free agent would you like? This one. All right. Next year they're going to come. That's basically what's gonna. That that's basically what NBA 2K has come to. Back in NBA 2K13, if I had a disagreement with a player, like uh, for example, when I first played with uh, the Dallas Mavericks in NBA 2K13, I wanted um, Charlie Villanueva. I'm sure you guys don't know him. Here's a photo of him now. This guy for me, I wanted to get traded. So what do I do? I walk into the GM's office. I ask for him to get traded. And since I'm the star player, he gets traded. That's just the way that it is. I miss, I miss those situations of actually wanting, getting a cutscene, wanting other players to get traded. I also miss the element of me getting traded or me getting injured. There is no surprise. No injuries happen in NBA 2K20. No injuries whatsoever. I know apparently it's a slight possibility. I've never seen an injury in NBA 2K20 that actually keeps you out of action, unless it's a cutscene. Just one cutscene saying, oh, I'm out for two weeks. I may as well sit out two weeks. That's it. That's the only thing I've seen in recent history about NBA 2K. I want the element of surprise in my career modes. I want things to get interesting. If, if a team feels like I'm not the best fit, for example, I'm playing with the Detroit Pistons in my NBA in my career. 
If they think that Blake Griffin is not the greatest fit for the Detroit Pistons, they ask me, do I want him traded? I say, no, I want to keep Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin stays. Maybe they think I'm not the best fit and they trade me to another team. Maybe Derek Rose isn't the best fit. Maybe um, we need another center. So we go and package uh, Blake Griffin and Henson. There's no logic. The NBA, f the NBA series is very, very um, predictable. Yes, there are a few trades here and there, but none of them are gonna be major trades that actually impacts the way that you play. If you feel like you're a team that's on the rise and ready for contention, you know what? You're never gonna get out of that because there's nothing that's gonna, Detroit or whatever team you go for are gonna actually do nothing to ensure that you could be a contender. It's as simple as that. There is no element of surprise. You're gonna go through, majority of the time, you're gonna go through your entire NBA season with the same team, no element of surprise, no, I want this guy traded, no me, I'm trying to get traded, nothing. It's either, I'm gonna get traded to the, to the Detroit Pistons, let's say. I'm playing for the Bulls, I request a trade to the Detroit Pistons, I'm going to the Detroit Pistons. Again, back in NBA 2K13, when even when you ask for a trade, like at the time, man, I was playing 2K as a, as a, as life, as life. I would never get off the game, man. I would try to get traded to as many teams as possible. I wanted to play with every team. And for the most part, you couldn't do that. And that's probably why they added this in, so that you could play with any team that you want. But I want the element of surprise. I asked for a trade to the Milwaukee Bucks. You send me to Golden State. In the end, you're a business. Not every player goes to the team that they want to go to. Simple as that. You need to add things like this into the game to make it more exciting. I don't want to pick again. It's the same with the draft. Sometimes I don't want to pick where I get traded. Sometimes, yes, you give me options and those options may as well come true. But if they don't come true, you ship me off to anywhere that you want to ship me off. The best package for the team. And sometimes things like that, it just goes, goes completely ignored. It's like, okay, the Lakers, right? I want to get traded to the Lakers. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm a 99 overall, but you're right. We'll trade you to the Lakers, but the Lakers are going to give us two second round picks of some random uh, rookie that they signed. There's no, there's no source of logic in the NBA 2K micro series. When you want to get traded, you're going to get traded for nothing. And in the end, all these things need to be justified. Again, I understand people might not like it that way. Give it, an, they make it an option to have surprises in the game. Give it an option. You have all these options for my league that make the experience better or worse depending on what you want it to be. The same thing needs to be done for the NBA 2K My Career Series. In conclusion, I've only added a few of the many things that I believe can be added into the NBA 2K21 game and further on in the future of the NBA 2K. Now, this video is not meant to be an absolute abuse attack towards NBA, towards the NBA 2K franchise either. All I want is to share my ideas, is to bring light on some situations that I feel like 2K might be afraid to implement. Affiliations is an absolute must in my opinion for many people. But regardless of what NBA decide to choose or not, or in regards to what the 2K wants to do, I just hope that even some of these ideas can get into the games. All I want to do and the main thing that I want is variety. I want my experience to be unique compared to everybody else's. My career has become stale, it's become bland, and it's become predictable. And in my opinion, that is the first thing that needs to change within the NBA 2K20 My Career series, or NBA 2K in general. Now, for that to happen, some of these ideas need to go through. Again, more sponsorships, we need that. We need an element of surprise, whether it's a draft or a trade or other people getting traded. Things need to be unique, things need to be diverse. I don't want my experience of NBA 2K to be the exact same as my best mates. I don't want that to happen. I want my experience to be my experience. I want, when I'm telling stories about what happened to my NBA 2K, my career, people say, what, how did that happen? All these things, that's what I want. I don't want the same old, same old every single year. And hopefully NBA 2K, down the line, this is my first video. Of course, there's gonna be mistakes. Of course, there are gonna be a bunch of things that people do not want in that game that I said. And of course, there are gonna be elements of things that people do like. Again, this is the very first video I've made that that is like this. And I'm just trying to give my two cents on the matter. At the end of the day, if you guys don't agree with what I say, you have the ultimate final say in everything, don't you? So. 
I just hope that at least you could consider the benefits of having things like affiliations, things like park badges and, and very good dribble moves, things like um, things like getting traded and drafts and giving options for more people depending on what they want their experience to be in the game. Different experiences lead to happier players. And in my opinion, NBA 2K, I don't think anyone's been happy with this game. I don't think anybody's been happy with the My Career series for a while now. So it's time that we make a change. It's time that 2K makes a change. It's time that we step up our game. It's time that everything goes into a new different level that brings all excitement back to the 2K franchise. In NBA 2K13 to NBA 2K14, we saw exactly everything I've been saying. We saw a revolutionary NBA 2K14. It's time to do that with NBA 2K21. But sometimes the, what makes a revolutionary is the things that you've done before, but you don't want to bring back. Revolution sometimes happens in mysterious ways. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Again, a, ver a very this is the very first video I made that was like this. It's very, very difficult sometimes. And it's scary, you know, putting yourself out there like this just to get people could criticize you people could say that your opinions are stupid or stuff it is not an easy video to make but in the end i want this game to be the best that it can be and i'm sure people watching this want the game to be the best that it can be i don't want to waste my my in australia it's it's a hundred dollars but in america it's 60. i don't want to waste 60 dollars on a game that just doesn't seem like it has much effort or much change going into it that's the thing that even Mike Wang said that they struggle with, change within every single year. How to make this game unique while the same concepts of what the NBA is remains. It's tough, it's not easy, but sometimes you need to change the game for the benefit of the players. They're keeping it the same because the same issue that Mike Wang seems to have, says that has a problem with every single basketball game, it is the problem. And that sometimes you need to make serious changes to fix it. Anyway. Have a wonderful and safe day. Next up, if you guys like this one, I might do my team. I think my team, especially this year, my team has been the best it has ever been. But there could be more that could make it better. Take care and peace.